Alright, welcome to the third episode of the Linux Home, Home Server Show. It's been probably about a month since the last one, so it's been a little while. Uh, but this episode is going to be, be about hypervisors. Um, kind of what hypervisors are available for free for home use and what are the benefits of some versus the others. So, uh, the first thing I did was I created a thread on Reddit in the home server subreddit about favorite hypervisor and I got a lot of responses on that. Um, the most popular one is the one I expected uh, to be the most popular one which is Proxmox. Proxmox offers um, a level one hypervisor, which means like a bare metal hypervisor, which means you get a disk or a uh, USB image and you boot up your server using this CD image or USB image. Um, and it installs an OS, a base OS, so you don't have an OS already. And that's what, for a server, that's pretty much most people want it that way. So so that they're not using resources running an OS and then on top of that they're running a hypervisor. The hypervisor is just at the base level so that's why it's called like a level one or bare metal hypervisor. And what this Proxmox does is it, it installs an OS and then you go to a web page and that's their management interface for the most part. Some of the uh, settings need to be changed on the command line via SSH remoting into your server and running commands that way. But a lot of it uh, can be done via this web interface, and from there you can create virtual machines, um, and then you can upload like a Linux image. They have a lot of default Linux image. You can have specialized Linux images from something like Turnkey. Turnkey provides a bunch of different images with pre-installed software that you might want. Say, if you want a blog, it'll have a WordPress image, and you just install that VM and then you boot it up and bam it's running you have to configure the network interfaces and stuff so that it can get outside you can either bridge them or bond them whatever you want to do um, it's fairly simple to get the basics set up on here a lot of it's just configuring like uh, the storage to make sure you have enough storage and you know if you're storing everything on one drive it might not be fast enough if you're running a lot of virtual machines so you gotta kinda make those considerations if you want like an SSD cache something like that so <clears throat> Proxmox is a great place to start um, on the video we're taking a look at my Proxmox server and as you can see I have three machines running they're all running as containers now they are Linux servers and since Proxmox is a Linux hypervisor. It runs them as a container, which is something you can look up on your own time. But it basically means that the resources, the shares are kernel, so the resources are a lot thinner and needs a lot less resources, so it runs better. Um, there are a few complications if you're running something like OpenVPN or something like that. There can be a few issues. So keep that in mind. Um, However, uh, you can see a lot of mine are um, bridge. They are bridged, so I have, um, I think I have like four network cards in the back of my server, and they're all routed to uh, different uh, servers. So, and Proxmox has a nice summary page that shows you kind of, you know, what's going on. Alright, and that's again free to use. Uh, it is Nagware. It'll nag you to buy a subscription if you need support, but you don't have to do that at all. So, um, the next one that was kind of mentioned that I've heard of before, obviously, is Zen Server. That seems more like something you'd want to run at your business. It is open source um, and it does have a lot of uh, high end management capabilities. Um, for administration and stuff like that. Not that Proxmox doesn't have that, it, it does, um, but uh, ZenServer is sort of geared toward that. <clears throat> um, it can virtualize again Windows and Linux. Um, I haven't looked at, you know, performance wise what's easier or what's better or what, what's easier to set up, so you have to do the research for that on your own. Uh, the next common one is 
Hyper-V, this is the Windows one, so if you're running Windows machines, this might be the thing for you. It does run Linux machines, and they say uh, support is getting a lot better, where it's running a lot better um, Linux uh, VMs, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, you can run it on Windows Server, if you have a license for that, or Windows Desktop. Uh, all of that's uh, fairly simple. Um, you do need a license for it unless you have Windows Server, I believe, in which case you get to run a certain number uh, for free, pretty much. Um, the next one is ESXi, which is um, VMware's option. They, uh, It is very powerful. Um, it has, it, or at least it did have a lot of issues where it needed like a Windows management tool to work best. Um, so there is that. It also uh, is was very picky, at least with what hardware it ran on. Proxmox will run on pretty much any hardware out there, whereas this needed it, some of the cus con or consumer side hardware I had didn't work with it. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Also listed was stuff like. Uh, VirtualBox with PHP VirtualBox where you can manage that, but that's like a level 2 hypervisor, it's running on an OS. Same with uh, Virtual Machines with Virt Manager. Um, but of course you can strip down uh, your OS if you really wanted to. So um, The next one is kind of a new newer entry uh, and this is kind of along the lines of a hypervisor. It, 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 it does run Docker. It's called Rancher OS and it runs Docker applications and it manages all of them and controls all of them and networks all of them. Um, and it has like a, a system Docker that creates user Dockers um, and then you can delete the user Dockers easily and it won't affect the system Docker. So that's something something to keep in mind if you want to run a lot of applications maybe they're not um, uh, maybe they're all just applications you want to quickly deploy or modify without modifying anything else so that's something to keep in mind if you want to research that <clears throat> so that's just a basic quick rundown of different hypervisors that are available for you when you're looking into server management